The likelihood of at least part-time distance learning this fall means for working parents, it's more of the same, trying to figure out how to juggle it all. And as Stephanie Lydon tells us, whether they're hourly workers or well-heeled executives, as this pandemic wears on, it's working moms who are more likely to pay the price. Four-year-old Reed has started playing a new game with his little sister. Pretend to be on a Zoom call. Sometimes they join their parents for the real thing. All right, can you say hi? Hi. Hi there. Jess and Zach Stanley were on this Zoom call to tell me about their version of pandemic parenting. Two kids, two careers, and no child care. There's always part of your brain that's looking at your phone while you're chasing the kid down the street. You're trying to listen or really uh, focus on a conference call and you're also being yelled at by your four-year-old that you're not peeling his orange fast enough for him. So <laughs> there's definitely this this pull and it makes you feel like torn as a torn into two. And research shows that pull more often than not leads mom, not dad, to take a step back from work. As the headline of a New York Times op-ed that went viral put it, in the COVID economy, you can have a kid or a job, you can't have both. The consequences at all levels of the pay scale can be devastating. Although it may be stressful to juggle child care, that's very different from the low-wage workers um, and the frontline workers who have to go in. They don't have a choice. They cannot, you can't be a cashier from home. Elizabeth Gedmark is with A Better Balance, a national organization that advocates for low-wage workers. And since schools shut down in March, has seen calls to its legal helpline quadruple. One thing she says few frontline workers seem to know about is the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. It allows up to 12 weeks of mostly paid leave for people who can't work remotely and have children whose school or daycare is closed because of the coronavirus. When you pass a law, you should also really work to educate the public about that law. And we haven't seen that happening. But even when leave is available, even when flexible hours are an option, even when women have Harvard MBAs. After they become mothers, they're, they're faced with these biases. They're seen as, you know, lower performing, even though their actual output and productivity may be just as, as high or higher. Colleen Ammerman of the Gender Initiative at Harvard Business School says the pandemic is exacerbating those biases and caregiving expectations that work against women. For instance, she points out, there's been a drop in journal submissions from female academics. So you're like already, even just a few months in, seeing the effects of this and studies saying, you know, women, um, when both parents are working at home, women are the ones who are doing more of the child management. And I read, did you hear me? Yes. What did I say? I don't know. So, who spends more time caring for the Stanley kids? I think Jess does. I'd agree. Yeah. They say she tends to have more flexibility. Still, they're concerned not only about finding a way to continue managing their own careers and kids, but to make sure colleagues can too. Talent retention is one of the biggest problems out there right now. And women are going to get dis disadvantaged even further. They're going to start dropping out of the workforce. I think employers should be really nervous. Raising kids and holding down a job has never been easy. But with so much uncertainty around schools, it's never been this hard. Stephanie Lydon, WGBH News. I know it's a mouthful, but that expansion of paid child care and sick leave mentioned in that piece is called the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. And it really is important. The Federal Reserve of Boston researchers believe it could expand paid leave access to millions of low-wage earners who need to stay home because they're sick or because their kids' schools are closed in the pandemic.